Okay, Great. so can I, should I get started? Yeah, go ahead and get started. Welcome again. Okay. Wow. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Sorry for that technological constraint. Well, you know, we're used to this. We're used to this because technology is not perfect. Technology is a work in progress. So um, if you're in Nigeria, as a tech savvy teacher, you should expect this and still head forward. You know, do not let this distract you or discourage you from using technology. Thank you so much for um, the honor. ACSI, I want to appreciate you for bringing me here. I find it an honor to talk to educators, on how to leverage on the benefits of technology. So this is huge for me. This is a great honor. Yeah, I've been doing this for years now and it just keeps getting, uh, it, it, it gets um, exciting, it gets fulfilling and I'm happy I'm here. Okay, so the need for schools to go virtual. The need for schools to go virtual right now we are in the post-COVID season and a lot is going on now. And I keep on saying that the right knowledge will help us as educators navigate successfully even at this time. So I believe the, the, the whatever I'll be sharing today will help you as a school owner, as a teacher, as, a, as an administrator, as an entrepreneur, successfully you know, ensure that our children are taught effectively at this time. So thank you once again. Thank you, everyone that has come here. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to be moving on. I believe Sarah has done justice, but I would like to uh, run through my brief profile here. I'm a certified educator with over 10 years of teaching experience. I've equipped educators and children with technology skills. I'm a wife and a mother who helps educators or business owners become an upgraded version through my mentorship programs. I'm a renowned speaker and an author of the book Arise. I like to be called the tech savvy teacher. So with this brief profile, I would like to say that um, I'm qualified to handle this session, and I believe with my experience, you would get an impactful experience today. So today, we'll be focusing on the meaning of virtual schools, the benefits, the challenges, and moving forward, what should we do? You know, should we be stuck with the challenges or should we move forward? So we're gonna be talking about all this today. Okay, I believe as educators, you have your writing pads with you, you have your, 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 your writing materials because trust me, you're gonna be getting so much value today. Now, what is virtual school? When you hear virtual school, okay, so before I get on, Sarah, can you just give me a thumbs up if you, if you can hear me? I just want to be sure that I'm- yeah, you're good, you're oh, audible. Great. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so what is a virtual school? As you can see here in this black um, background, a virtual school can also be regarded as an online school, as a cyber school, or as an e-school. So whichever one you want to call it, you're good, okay? A virtual school simply teaches students primarily online or through the internet. A virtual school or an online school or a cyber school primarily teaches students online. So I believe we're, we've, we've gone past that. For those who were not really conversant with the term virtual school. Now, what are the benefits? I mean, why on earth should we go virtual? Apart from the, from the reason that, that, that schools are on lockdown, you know, apart from that reason, why is virtual school beneficial to us. Now it's beneficial for six reasons. It's, it's, it's accessible, it's self, it enables self-paced learning, it enables efficient time management skills, it's convenient, 
it offers our students exposure, and it offers us tech savvy skills. It makes us tech savvy. I'll go back to accessibility. What does it mean? You know, now because we are taking our content, we are transferring instruction to online, to the online um, um, means, you know, or medium. Our content becomes readily accessible, you know. For children that, can, that cannot be in the classroom 24 seven, every child gets to us access your content because it is now online. Now, even when we were in school, you know, even when we were in our physical school structure, I, 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 I strongly advocate for the flipped classroom model. Sorry to digress a little, but this is important because I used to advocate for the flipped classroom model for those who are conversant with that model of teaching where, you know, you, the teacher transfers instruction to, 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 to online, you know, so that children can access her, uh, the, 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 the instruction even before they come to school. So whether we are locked down or not, online teaching is very effective. Why? Because children get to access it in the bus, in the train, in the, at home, on their beds, wherever they get to access your content anywhere. Now that's beautiful. That's amazing. You know, I say that's amazing because we deal with different kinds of learners. Children do not learn at the same pace. Now this takes me to the next benefit, self-paced learning. We know that our children do not learn at the same pace. We have slow learners, we have average learners, we have fast-paced learners. So it's impossible to, to, to actually demand for the same um, 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 feedback, for, this, for the same um, result. Yes, that's the word. It's impossible to demand for the same result from our children when we know that they learn at different times, you know. So that's the beauty of virtual learning. That's the beauty of transferring instruction online because there is a self-paced system in place. A child wants to just take a break for, 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 for a minute. That is possible with online schooling. Now, time management. For you to be able to learn online effectively, I believe you have to have efficient time management skills. And that's one of the benefits. Convenience. So instead of probably um, um, being um, in, a, in a system where you have to sit with probably 30 children or 20 children, as the case may be, a child is actually in a convenient atmosphere, psychologically balanced, emotionally stable to learn and to, 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 to actually get the desired result. Exposure, how about exposure? Now, with online learning, you can be assured that the children are not limited to the children in, in their classroom. The children are not limited with the environment. A child can actually be discussing with a child in USA, with a child in UK, with a child in Ghana, with a child in South Africa, because there is exposure. You can even, um, avail, the children can be availed with Skype in the classroom, you know, zoom look at what we're doing now look at what we're doing we're actually conversing from different states in nigeria you know and this is even possible we can access people all around the world with technologies like zoom like um google meet like um microsoft um streams you know i'll, I'll be sharing more light on these software applications now this is the exposure that online schooling virtual skill schooling is giving us the last benefit of online school is tech savviness i believe some of you right here you might be using zoom for the first time and even though you're not using zoom for the first time the more you use zoom the more tech savvy you become right the more you use any tech skill or tech 
tech tool, you get more and more exposed to that skill. You know, I, I, I let me use um, 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 Canva, for instance. I've been using Canva for years. Canva is a software application where you can cr create awesome, amazing graphics. And it, it, it just amazes me that the more I use Canva, the more the, the new things I, I, I discover. That is what technology is. That is how technology is. So there is never an end to learning. You just keep getting bet better. You just keep getting tech savvy. You just, and you're like, wow, I never, I never understood this. I never discovered this. This is new. That is how tech, that is what technology brings. That is what e-learning brings. And it's beautiful. It's fulfilling. It, it gives you a sense of fulfilling, fulfillment, sorry. Now let's get to the challenges. As you know, we will not deny the challenges it has on us, on our children, we will not deny. I would be depriving you of reality if I would skip out challenges. Yes, technology comes with its challenges, but it's our approach to these challenges that makes us better, that makes us tech savvy, that makes us effective as 21st century educators. Now, what are the challenges of virtual schooling? You have low academic performance, you have low student engagement. You have the digital divide. You have lack of tech savvy teachers. You have lack of social interaction. You have low parental involvement. You have lack of inclusivity. Now I'll explain this one after the other. Low academic performance. Now, the truth is that in this post COVID season, there will be a lot of drawback. There will be drawback because everybody is trying to grasp how Zoom is being used, how to transfer instruction online, you know. Everybody is trying to do that. And in the process, there will be a drawback. There will be a, 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 there will be a, a low engagement rate from students because everybody is just trying to see how this is possible. There will not be a hundred percent online accessibility. Look at what happened today. So I was trying to come online and voila, <laughs> it just went up. So these are technology um, 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 challenges that happens in the school system as well. So as a school owner, you, you tell yourself, oh, I want to start third term online. You know, you start and you, you figure out that not every child is on board with you. You see children still trying to understand how this works. So, hey, there are casualties. And we should not deceive ourselves. There, there will be casualties. For every technological um, um, innovation, there has to be casualties. But, hey, we learn in the process. So there is going to be low, uh, there, 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 there is bound to be low academic performance, performance because of low student engagement. You see that in a school, instead of probably having 40 children online, you have 30. What happens to the 10? There is a drawback. And what of digital divide? What does it even mean? Now, when I say digital divide, this, uh, this refers to, uh, to, the, to the low uh, um, amount of people that have access to technology, software, or hardware. Now you want your parents to come online with their children. What happens if they don't have laptops? What happens if they don't have smartphones, smart devices? What happens? Now that's where digital divide comes in. That is where digital divide is a challenge. What happens if your teachers do not even have laptops? You know, the other day I was, I, was, I was talking to a school owner on how they can come on board with my training. And... This school owner told me, if he, our teachers do not have laptops. And I said, wow, this is a challenge, but I'm not going to let that challenge overcome us. We are not going to let that challenge overcome us. And do you know what I said? I said, you know what? We've come up with a software application. Our, our teachers can actually use their smartphones to create content, to create audiovisual content. Um, 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 content, you know, audiovisual instruction. And she was so amazed. 
to I'm like, wow, so does that mean that even though our teachers do not have laptops, they can actually create content with their smartphones? He said, yes, 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 it's possible. So even, at, even when we do not have in, a, a lot of um, um, technology um, tools and gadgets, we can still survive. That's the good news. We can still survive. The next challenge we'll be encountering is lack of tech-savvy teachers. How many of your teachers are tech-savvy? How many educators listening to me now know how to transfer instruction from the conventional classroom to the, 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 the home, home front, you know? How can you ensure that even when your children are at home, they can still have access to instruction? How can you ensure that children at home can look at you and say, wow, that's my teacher. Wow, that's my math teacher. Look at, I can hear her voice. I can see her face. I can see what she's teaching me. And I can actually engage with her. You know? But if our teachers are not equipped with the, the, with the, with the technology um, software, with the technology skills necessary to, to make this happen, then it becomes a challenge. The next is low lack of social interaction. Hey, children are at home, right? And they can't see their, their, their friends, you know, they can't see the teacher. So a lot of discouragement is here. But hey, we are not going to let that stop us, are we? No, we are not. Because when there are, there, there are software applications like Zoom, schools can actually have assemblies, physical meetings, where children will see their, their friends, you know, where parents will see other parents, where parents will get to see teachers. Physic like, okay, not physically now, but online. So that social interaction challenge is being um, um, overcome here. So can you see that even as I'm stating the challenges, I'm also stating how we can overcome, you know. As tech-savvy teachers, as 21st century educators, we should not be stuck with challenges. We should not allow tech challenges draw us back. We should not allow challenges um, um, uh, affect us. A lot of times you see in, this, in social, on social media, you see a lot of conversations going on. Oh, but it's all about the problems, problems, problems. Hey, we are tech savvy teachers. We are 21st, 21st century teachers. We should be solution driven. We should be solution oriented. You know, we should be saying, what should we do? What steps should we take? Instead of saying, oh, these are the problems, our parents are complaining, this is happening, we do not have this, we do not have that. So here are the challenges, but hey, here are the solutions. Low parental involvement. Low parental involvement. Now, when you talk about low parental involvement, are, are, are parents actually involved in the educational system? Before now, there has to be the impact. <laughs> Funny enough, a parent called me a, a couple of days ago and told me, Ify, we need your help. Ify, what is going on? Ify, I am with my child. I'm busy. You know, I have to work. I have to work, but I'm just stuck with my child. <laughs> with my child. You know, she was just complaining. I'm stuck with my child. What, what is our school doing? I'm paying school fees, but it doesn't seem like. It seems like I'm doing all the work. It seems like everything is on me. And you know what? I have to work. I have to work. Hey, so school owners listening to me, this is feedback. This is feedback. And this, the, this, this parent is complaining that I have a child in, in, in junior secondary. I have a child in primary. What should I do? Our, our, our schools are playing, you know. They are not ready for online school. This was the feedback from a parent. So hey, if you are listening to me, school owners, if you're listening to me, educators, we have to sit up. We have to sit up, you know, because our parents have to be involved. And when they are involved, what do we have to offer them? 
how can we ensure that there is no much pressure at their end? Because, you know, I, I, I even watched on TV the other day, a parent from another part of the world was actually, she was almost in tears. And she was like, oh, you people want to just let us, you know, you people want to show our children that we do not understand math, that we do not understand English, <laughs> what is going on? So with this shutdown, a lot of parents need to be involved. A lot of parents need to understand what is going on. A lot of parents need to understand how does the live streaming work? It is not enough to say, oh, let's use Zoom. Oh, let's use Google Classroom. Oh, let's use Microsoft Teams. Do not leave your parents behind. We need our parents to be involved right now. We need our parents to, 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 to be involved because, hey, without their involvement, we do not stand a chance. Effective child education cannot be possible if our parents are not involved. If our parents are exhausted, if our parents are giving up, <laughs> we cannot have our children learn successfully. So we have to understand what is going on and handle this whole situation with tact, with a great positive mindset and approach. Okay? So while we're telling our parents, oh, please, hey, and besides, if you're a parent watching me, our, our schools are trying, you know, our teachers are trying. For those that are going online, you know, the, in fact, they are doing five times what they were doing in the in-person schooling system. They are doing even more right now. Every hand is on deck. Everybody is working so hard. So our parents need to be involved. Our parents need to encourage our schools to actually make this work, you know? So even as we, we want to support parents, we also need the, the support of parents at schools. School owners need to, you know, a, a, a school, that decided to go online after the training i had with them she said if the uh, teacher asked us our parents do not even want to pay school fees anymore our parents are saying oh are you sure this is even going to work you know so hey we cannot do it without your support so all hands need to we need to support each other teachers need to support parents parents need to support the school you know teachers need to support the students so every all hands has to be on deck at this point in time. Now the next challenge is lack of inclusivity. What is inclusivity? I would just give a term to define that. No student left behind. No student left behind. So right now, there is so much temptation to leave a lot of children behind. Are you talking about the special children with special needs? Are you talking about autistic children? But the rule of inclusivity states that you do not leave any child behind. Are you talking about children that cannot access technology? Are you talking about children whose parents are tech novices? Lack of inclusivity is, 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 uh, is the challenge right now. Children are being left behind, but hey, how can we ensure that no child is being left behind at this time? It's very important. If you are so passionate, if you are an educator and you are passionate about education, every child matters. Every child matters. Every child is equivalent to a generation. I keep saying this even on my social media community. I keep saying that as a teacher, you have to see a child as a generation. So when we see a child as a generation, you will not want to leave any child behind because that child means a lot. That child is important. That child represents a generation. And if you turn a blind eye to that child, then you are turning a blind eye to a generation. So every child needs to be taken into cognizance at this time. I was having a, a, an Instagram live session last week with a special needs expert from Canada. And she was actually telling us how 
a lot of children with special needs can actually come on board at this time with technology tools and software application. So, hey, technology has come to help us. Technology has come to give us an advantage. So we should use it wisely. Let's move on. Moving forward. Can you see my slide? Moving forward. We're not going to be stuck with our challenges. We are going to move forward. Now, this moving forward level is in three phases. The first part, thank you so much for the nods. I'm encouraged that you're following me. Thank you. Okay, so the first part is engage in massive. Now, when I say massive, I mean massive. Massive technology training and awareness. Now, do not look, do not run ignorant. Do not say, oh, every school is going online. Let us go online without knowledge, without skill. In fact, a parent complained to me last month that if he, I was invited by my school, the school where my child attends, I was invited to this Facebook group, you know, and they told us to, to come online. You know, they told us to come online as parents and uh, so that our children can learn. And I came online and it was a chaos. It was chaotic. What were they trying to do? Now, when you run into something without the right knowledge, without the right skill, you will, you would, you would, you would come off as unprofessional. You would, you would bring down your value. You would bring down your, the perception as a school, you need to maintain how do parents look at you? How do parents perceive you? And if you do just run blindly at this time because you are desperate to go online, because you are desperate to, 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 to keep up with other schools, without the right skill, without the right knowledge, you would be running at a loss you would be reducing your perception in the eyes of parents drastically. I do not want you as a school owner to just run blindly. I don't want you as a teacher to just teach averagely. You are not a mediocre. You are excellent. You are excellent as a school owner, as an educator, see yourself as excellent. And when you see yourself as excellent, you would, run to, you, want, you would want to approach this post-COVID season with the right tools, with the right skills, with the right approach, because you understand that you are excellent. That is why we should engage. Look, a lot of schools are running ignorant at this time. Sorry to say, but that's just the reality on ground. A lot of schools, I just say, eh, probably for fear of investing, money for fear of spending money you are running about your online school the right way hey you would realize that when you invest rightly at this time you would even the return on investment in the long term would be massive for you and you will be grateful you did that so equip your teachers train them ensure that you are ready I remember last two years, Corona schools, Lagos, actually sent their teachers, a, a, a huge number, to my tech training. And I was so impressed. I was impressed with that mindset of, oh, we are not claiming that we are a big school. We are not, we are not forming that, oh, we have arrived. We still want to learn. Why? because we are lifelong learners. And I give it to them. And they, they, they were able to create amazing audiovisual content. And hey, when this pandemic happened, I was smiling because I knew that they were going to navigate smoothly. So right now, what do we need? We need to engage in massive technology training. If you are a government, if you are in government, if you are in a place of position in government look we need to train our teachers we need to train as a government 
as the public, as the as in the public sector, in the private sector, we need to join our hands together to ensure that our educational system is working rightly, is working efficiently. So what's the second part of moving forward? Parental buy-in. Parental buy-in. How can we ensure that our parents buy in at this time? Now, for our parents to even understand the value we are giving. Because trust me, the value of e-learning surpasses the value of in-person learning. Trust me, with the benefits you've seen, with the benefits I highlighted in my second slide, you would agree with me that e-learning is even more effective than in-person teaching and learning. So, the, but the issue right now is that there is a mental block. There is a mindset, there is a traditional mindset that, oh, I need to see my teacher physically for me to say that learning has taken place. Oh, I need to see my students before I know that I have taught them effectively. So there needs to be parental buying. I tell this to my to my clients, to my cost, to my to my teachers, to my parents that look for technology integration to be successful. There needs to be parental buy-in. There needs to be um, teacher buy-in. There needs to be children buy-in. You cannot say, oh, I want to run with technology without ensuring that the, the, the three key players in education buy into it. And our parents are one of the key players. They need to understand. A lot of they are complaining now because they do not understand what is Zoom. What does this even mean? I'm seeing a video lesson. How can my child even learn? Okay, my child cannot even talk back. My child cannot give feedback. How is it possible? Oh, you are saying Google Classroom. I do not even know what that means. Mean. I, I do not know how to come online. I do not know how to access instruction on Google Classroom. And if I, as a parent, I am ob oblivious of that. If I am not equipped with how to use Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or any software or, or any learning management system, how am I able to support my child? So can you see how crucial parental buy-in is in the whole scheme of things? Our parents need to buy in. And the only way is to engage in massive training and orientation even for our, our parents so in in because i do a training on 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 schools you know on this virtual schooling and after on the last day of the training i tell them look you need to ensure your parents buy in what are the steps what are the procedures what do you need to do and one of the parents so far was able to create an, 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 an a, a video an explainer video for parents on how to navigate these learning management systems. I was so impressed with that, you know. So this, this, this school owner was able to say, hello, parents. It's um, tech service school, and we are inviting you to our new virtual school. I know this is new, but hey, do not be discouraged. You can do it, and together we will achieve a successful virtual school. Your child do, does not have to stay at home on end. We can achieve instruction effectively. Now, this is what we're going to be using as a school. And um, this is how to use it. This is where we'll be uploading content. This is how you can click on this. This is where you can put your questions. This is how you can do this and do that and do that. And with that, the. the I mean, our parents would buy in right. Our parents would be able to appreciate whatever technology tool or software we are engaging our children at this time. Remember, there is no assistant teacher in the homes of your children. The parents are the assistant teachers we have. 
So we have to ensure that they understand the concept, the tools, the skills involved. I know this is work. Hey, I am not insensitive. I am not. I, I know a lot of people will be saying, if you don't understand the stress, if you don't understand how difficult, or oh, in fact, at the school owner myself, I'm even gradually taking this in. It's not, it's even new to me. I know. I know and I understand. But hey, we need to support each other. That is why I also use so, in fact, I had a, a live Instagram live session for parents primarily. You know, telling them, look, you need to support our schools. You need to support our schools at this time. I know you might not really be seeing a perfect uh, virtual school um, integration, but we, with your support, we can get through this successfully. So I understand. I understand. But we need to do something. We cannot sit down and fold our arms. We need to do something. So what's the final part here? Identify tech tools that work, maximize and engage fully. And engage fully. Identify tech tools that work. Now I'll pause there. Identify, I didn't just say identify tech tools. I said identify tech tools that work. A lot of the time, a lot, it, it, I, I, you know, schools just get involved in tools without understanding can this tech tool suit or does this tech tool suit my parents the locality the environment can zoom work at some certain locations are you asking deep questions or you are just running blindly with the fact that oh they are using zoom let's use zoom oh they're using this let's use this no we should understand, we should be able to say, okay, I, I, I understand my locality. I understand my environment. What is the best approach? What is the best and eff most effective tool right now to ensure that when we do this, that when we go virtual, we will be successful. So we have to understand that what tools work for you as a school? If you know, if you have more of internet challenge at this time, what tools will work for you? You know, so these are important um, factors to consider. How can you now fully maximize? You know, I I I got I know I I I like I like talking from my experience. You know. Because I leave this, I leave technology, I leave all this. I like saying, oh, I like referring to my conversations with teachers, with educators. So, hey, don't mind me when I say refer to them because this is what I do, you know. So I, I got a call. I got a call from a school owner in, in, in Lagos. And she was one of the school owners I actually mentored one on one. And she told me, if he, I am. I'm super excited. We've started the flipped classroom in our school. And not just that, when this pandemic happened, we were able to use WhatsApp. WhatsApp, we were able to maximize WhatsApp. Our teachers were able to create content and send our parents, children on WhatsApp. Now, look, a lot of schools think that WhatsApp is derogatory. Probably if you say, oh, you are using WhatsApp, probably you are not a big school. Oh, it's for the... No! You will be amazed what WhatsApp can do for you. You will be amazed how much communication effectiveness you would get from WhatsApp. So when I even train on learning management system, I say, look, ensure that there are multiple lines of communication with your parents because there are some parents that like whatsapp as a means of communication so if they like communicating via whatsapp you need to use whatsapp right so that they can be 
um, involved in whatever you are doing while you are helping them navigate with other software platforms you are using, right? So you have to be able to maximize every tool, every tech tool at this time and engage fully. Do not be in and out. Engage fully. Because when you engage fully, you get the best at this time. Okay, so I'm going to be starting from number three and, and sharing more light on the tech tools that are relevant for us at this time. Uh huh. Okay, so what can you see on my screen? You can see video creation tools. Now, why is this my, why is this the first set of tools i'm introducing to you because as tech savvy teachers <laughs> you know let, let me let, let me say this i've been preaching create videos or video creation tools i've been preaching it i've been shouting it on the rooftop for over three years before it, this happened and when this happened a lot of schools said wow how did you even know that how did you even anticipate that the world will be caught with this pandemic, you know? So the best skill as an educator you need right now is video creation skill. If you as an educator is able to create content in audiovisual form, you are good to go. Look, let me tell you, for we are in Nigeria and the internet connectivity is not at its best how can we still engage in technology as nigerians as africans and still say yes we are having a good experience when you are able to create pre-recorded videos in fact if i start telling you the benefits of creating pre-recorded videos i will not end today there are so many any benefits so you need to start creating videos and hey online you can learn online i was teaching 30 teachers and you know what they were sending their videos to me and i was so impressed i was happy i was like wow do you know why i was happy i was happy that nigerian educators have gotten to the level where they can now learn online where they can learn and get results online. Before this pandemic happened, I was talking to a, 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 an educator, a French tutor, on joining my, my mentorship program. And you know what she said? And you know what? I, was, I, I, I intentionally make my mentorship programs a virtual program. Because I want educators to get used to the online space. And this educator told me, no, 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 no. I want to see you personally. I cannot learn online. I cannot learn without seeing you. And I laughed and I smiled and I said, wow. <laughs> Are you ready to be a 21st century educator? How can you want to be an online instructor when you haven't been, when you are not an online learner? If you cannot learn online, you cannot teach online because you will not be able to fashion your content in such a way that your children will learn. You need to be an online learner first so that you can understand what are the learning challenges your children would face, your students would face when you teach them online. So do you now know why these tools to create videos are important? I believe so. So hey, look, look at this one. This is PowerPoint. This is Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, this is great. Uh, this is great for creating presentations. And you know what? When I train on video creation skills, we start by creating the presentation first, right? So you need to create your presentation. Your presentation is more like your content. I, I remember an Igbo teacher, I taught this skill in, 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 in River State, Port Harcourt. And for the first time in my life, I loved learning Igbo. And I was so excited. And I said, I wish this skill was here 
15 years ago, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have had no grades in that subject. You know, so when you convert instruction to audiovisual materials using PowerPoint, for instance, so we'll start with PowerPoint. You need to use PowerPoint to create your slides and ensure that your slides are pictorial. Your slides are less wordy and more pictorial. Remember, do not make your slide like a newspaper. Your children will slip up. You have to ensure that your slides, your presentation are so engaging, are visually appealing. Look at my slide. Do you agree with me that they are visually appealing? You can see that I use more images to, to, to convey my message to you. And as an adult, you are loving my slides. And there is a power of imagery here. Because when you, what your eyes see, it captures in your mind. And when you see more of visually appealing content, knowledge sticks. Knowledge is being retained. So when you use PowerPoint to create presentation for your learners, knowledge sticks. So when I say use PowerPoint, the fact that I'm telling you that PowerPoint is one of the tools does not mean that your, your, your content will be excellent. No. So you have to ensure that you know how to use PowerPoint effectively. So that, you're, you're, because I do a lot of corrections. So many teachers send me their, their videos and I say, no, 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 no. This video is so worthy. This video, the, sorry, this presentation is so worthy. I need more pictures. You are teaching a grade two child. You should not make your, 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 your slide drab, you know. Another amazing, amazing tool I've been using for three years now is Canva. Canva is another tool that, can, that enables you to create amazing presentation, content, presentations, you know graphic designs, social media designs, amazing. So you might want to try it out, Canva, canva.com. Just go to canva.com and, and create an account. Okay, so if you notice on my left-hand side, I, I, I'm giving you the tools that you can use to start your video creation process, which is your presentation design process. That's the first phase. Now, when you're done creating your, your presentation, the next thing you want to do is convert your presentation to videos, right? You want to, put, you want to bring your presentation to life using screencasting software application. Now, on my right-hand side, you can see Screencast-O-Matic, one of the amazing software I've been using for years. Another is Camtasia Studio. Another software application I've been using for years, it's amazing, you know, it's amazing. And when I create my content, I, I share my screen, I share my, my, my slides, and I talk to my, my children. Hello, fourth grader. I'm your math teacher, and I'm here to teach you multiplication by nine, you know. And let me tell you a bit of my experience with video creation. So one day in my room, I was, I was, this is, Okay, this was even when I was a single lady. I actually created a video lesson on math, mathematics, multiplication by nine. You know that, um, I don't know whether you know the finger trick, right? Multiplication by nine. And I just did it for fun, though. I did it for fun. And I created, I put my phone in front of me and I created this video content. And I decided to share it for free on my YouTube channel. And guess what happened? few weeks after a child in grade six she was a neighbor of mine she just ran into my house entered my kitchen and said miss ify miss ify i know how to multiply by nine i said okay and she said i watched your youtube video i watched your video on youtube and i'm like oh my god are you serious and from that moment i started taking video creation seriously I started taking, because a child of 10, of how old, a sixth grader could go on YouTube 
and access my online content, my instructional content. These children are inquisitive. So when you give them the right content, they take it and they use it effectively. So I cannot just overemphasize how valuable creating videos are. I cannot overemphasize it. Now let's head over to the next set of tools, live streaming tools. So you know Zoom, right? Because everyone is on Zoom right now. It's a live streaming tool. We are using it to um, host live meetings. In, in fact, a school, a school actually used Zoom to hold their first assembly during this post-COVID season. And it was amazing, right? The children dressed up in their school uniforms and in their different houses, they were dressed. It was lovely. They were dressed and in this Zoom call, everyone, they were singing the national anthem. They were saying everything they were supposed to do in a, an in-person school. And, you know, that, that, that is actually maximizing technology, you know. So you can actually get the best of technology at this time with the right tools. So you can use tools, you use Zoom, you can use Google Meet, you can also use what? Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Stream. It's one of the application on Microsoft. So, hey, amazing, right? Amazing. You, you, you should check all these tools out. They are live streaming tools that are effective. Now, let me say something here. Let me say something here. In as much as we would want to use live streaming for our schools, to, you know, we are excited. We can host live, um, uh, we can host live um, 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 trainings, live lessons, live classes, but these tools need a lot of um, internet. It, 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 it demands a high internet connectivity. And you know what? You know that you as a school, you are not the only one providing the internet now. Your parents are also providing internet. So you might not want to use these live streaming applications on a daily basis, on a consistent basis. You might want to use it probably twice in a week so that our parents do not burn out. Because trust me, data is now the new gold right now. Data is expensive. And if we use um, these live streaming tools 24 seven, our parents will get weary. They will start complaining. I see a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of schools on Instagram posting, oh, live sessions, live sessions, that's beautiful. But hey, what happens when we are not able to sustain this system in the long run? You are going to affect the way our children learn. They will get discouraged. When you are making your children, um, when you are saying, oh, this is how we are going to be learning 247. And when you stop in a month's time, they will say, oh, what's going on? and they will get discouraged altogether. So that is why you would want to um, flip it. You would want to interchange it, create pre-recorded videos and have live sessions interchangeably so that you can have fewer live sessions and more pre-recorded sessions and give feedback on WhatsApp and on different communication platforms, right? There is even Telegram. Telegram is amazing, you know, for communication. There, is a, um, there are Facebook groups where you can host your, your, your teachers, but I would advise that you use either Telegram or WhatsApp, you know, it, or even um, a Microsoft Meet for a close-knitted communication experience, yeah? Okay, so I believe we are, we are good with this tools. Now the next tool is school hosting tools. School hosting tools. Now you want to host your, your virtual school, right? 
and I believe a lot of you must have heard about Google Stroom. There is also Microsoft Teams. You can also host classes there. You know, amazing. You know, these different applications have their uniqueness. You know, they have their uniqueness. I even found out about um, um, the, 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 uh, one of the packages in Microsoft Tools where children with special needs are able to read you know there's so many so many so many benefits so that we can ensure inclusivity at this time remember no child left behind so we need to understand what do what 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 can google classroom offer me what can microsoft teams offer me at this time and what's my best option yeah so i'm exposing you to all these tools all this application all this application it's important for you to know them okay now you've known you know let me pause for a second and go back to what we've been saying so far let's do a little recap so we've been talking about the benefits we, we actually defined what uh, an online schooling is you know talked about Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. What is an, what, what does a virtual school mean, actually? What are the benefits? What are the challenges? So we talked about what is a virtual school. It says it's either an online school, a cyber school, or an e-school. And it's primarily for the purpose of teaching students online or through the internet, right? And we are talking about the benefits, and we said it's accessible. Um, con we can we can easily access content online. We can children can learn at a self-paced um, way. We we said um, the time management skills can be gotten through e-learning. It's e-learning is actually a convenient learning way for children. It offers children exposure, and it makes us tech savvy. We saw the challenges, we saw low academic performance, low student engagement, the digital divide, lack of tech savvy teachers, lack of social interaction, low parental involvement, lack of inclusivity. And hey, we said we're not stuck there, we need to move forward. And we said, how can we move forward by engaging in technology training, by ensuring our parents buy in, by um, identifying, maximizing, and fully engaging the technology tools at our disposal. And we actually talked about what are these tools? We talked about the video creation tools. We talked about the live streaming tools. And we talked about the school hosting tools. So I believe you actually gotten so much so far don't worry i sarah told me there's going to be a q and a after now so i'm getting ready for your questions but hey remember now let me tell you a truth and a reality not everybody that attends a training session goes back with results that is the truth of life but one thing you have to determine in your mind as you're listening to me is that I'm not going to sit down on this information. I'm going to work at it. I'm going to take action. I'm going to execute on all what I've heard, on all what I've learned, and make a right impact in my school, in my environment, in my state. Now, that's who a tech savvy teacher is. You are not going to procrastinate on what is important okay you need to take action you've learned you've you've been equipped with the right knowledge now it is time to take action now i've been talking about um you know at this time a lot of schools cannot even pay their teachers a lot of schools cannot even pay and a lot of teachers are worried a lot of school owners are even concerned that oh how am i going to pay my teachers I believe you would love your teachers to have a skill where they can create a side income for themselves 
and not depend on what you are going to pay them 100%, right? If your teachers have a side income, they will be motivated, especially when you are the one that exposed them to that income stream. They will be so indebted to you. They will be grateful and they would teach more. They will put in their best at this time. Trust me, with, without paying your teachers, without them earning a living at this time, there is no motivation. There would be a limit to where their passion will go. Trust me. So, hey, I came up with an empowerment program for educators. And I'm going to show you in a bit. Teacher Empowerment Program by the Tech Savvy Teacher International. If you're reading this, you'll see how to create a six-figure income with your animation skill. Now, this, this masterclass actually started last week Saturday. Now, if, for those that know me, I leave it. I, I leave it. I give more value than you can ever imagine. And the teachers that listened to this online masterclass, the teachers that were in attendance, they were blown away. I actually had school owners in attendance. I had teachers, I had teachers, school owners that sponsored their teachers. And it was amazing. It was an eye opener. Wow. So I can actually learn animation and use it to make an income for myself. That's amazing. I hope you know that right now the world is going on social media everybody wants to be online right and animation is an amazing tool for you to spread the word even as a teacher you can use animation 3d animation 2d animation to convert your teaching experience imagine a grade three child learning mathematics in animation form how would that be so with the instructional benefits and the financial benefits, animation is amazing. And so as a way of empowering educators in this time and season, I've come up with this program, this premium masterclass where educators can actually learn how they can empower themselves with this skill. Now, this is how to make money from a skill, right? From your animation skill. So you have to know how to, you have to have that skill. That is the entry requirement for this masterclass. You have to come in with that skill. Now, this premium masterclass is worth so much, but I am giving a lot of every educator that is interested for free, totally for free. Come and learn. Come and learn how to make money with your animation skill now they have to come in with a skill right but they have to learn that skill they have to learn before they can talk about making money right so i came up with a course on animation 3d animation so they get the course they learn how to create 3d animation then they are fit to attend my master class. Now, you need to pay for the course, right? <laughs> you need to pay for the course. So when you pay for this course, you have a free access to the master class I previously showed you. Now, this animation comes with a, a complimentary course. That is just amazing. It comes with a complimentary course on Google Classroom. So if you don't know how to use Google Classroom, you are getting that even in this course. So this is an amazing course and you're not supposed to be getting this course with the level of results you'll be getting at this amount. And you are even getting it with a free access to a, a, a my premium masterclass. So this is just so much value in one. But I'm an educator, I'm a teacher, I'm, I, I once taught in the class and I understand the challenges, especially at this time where teachers are, are, are at home. So that is why you are getting it at this fee. So it's just me doing this for 
our educational system. Okay, so these are for educators. Now, this is for school. This is a school program I run for schools now. If I, for now, this is a three-day affair, back to back. It's so comprehensive, where you will be learning how to run your virtual school. You know, I've, I've done this with different schools in different states in Nigeria, and it has been so effective. You know, I'm having schools in, in, in uh, Benin City, in, uh, in uh, um, Calabar, tell me, wow, we've started our online school after your training. You know, this made it happen. So this is a three-day training where, and it's, it's not a general thing. It's a school, one-on-one -on -one school approach. It's just like an in-house training for your school but on a virtual level. So we are dealing with your school one-on-one -on -one and we are holding your hands and telling you, you can do it. So if you're interested in this, you can as well indicate your interest. I want to say a big thank you to ACSI, Association for Christian Schools International Nigeria. I want to say thank you. I want to say I'm deeply honored i want to say i'm deeply grateful for this huge opportunity you know to to talk to a, a, a huge number of educators i want to say i'm grateful acsi you are you are doing amazing you know putting up this whole program is not easy but you did it you made it work you are amazing acsi and i want to say thank you for giving our educational system a, a chance to be better Thank you so much. And I want to thank these amazing educators, school owners, edu teachers, entrepreneurs, so many of you that stayed up to this time to listen to me. I want to say thank you. Now, I, I want you to follow me on my Instagram handle at Tech Savvy Teacher Trainer. You, might, you want to do that. Trust me, because so much is going on. We have um, live live streaming sessions from schools all around, from from professionals and experts all around the world. We have um, such sessions, you know, and these are hosted on my Instagram page. You might want to uh, follow me on Instagram at Tech Savvy Teacher Trainer, and you might want to join our Facebook community. I mean, if you are serious about being a tech savvy teacher in this time. You should be part of the Tech Savvy Teachers Facebook community. So be a part of us on Facebook and get the best. And that is our business line. If you're interested in communicating with us or, um, on our services, you can just get in touch. Thank you so much. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ify. We're so grateful for all that you're able to share with us this afternoon. So I think it was a blessing to all of us. Um, so we'll open it up for questions. Um, I will turn it over to my colleague, Jide, who will coordinate this question period. Since we got started late, we'll go a bit over 4.30. Um, so if you have questions, send them to the chat, or you can raise your hand and you can ask your question uh, verbally. So it looks like we don't have any questions yet. So send in your questions or raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Olajide. I work with ACSI. I would like to take questions now. I'm also grateful to Mrs. EFS and it has been a wonderful session. Um, we've got to continue to enlarge you. Yeah, welcome. Um, do we have questions? If you have questions, please type it at the chat um, icon. Just click on the chat icon and put in your question. And if you want to see anything, you can actually just raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Okay, I have a hand. Precious. Um, okay. Um, okay. Can I go on? Yes, please go on. Go on. Ask your question. So, hi, Ify. Thank you so much for the session. It was really uh, impactful. I just wanted to find out. Um, you you were talking about giving concessions to teachers, and you didn't mention how much we stand to gain. How much are we supposed to pay? Is it the same ten thousand, or you're giving us? Something? 
I'm again. I am Nigerians, I hail you, I hail you. Okay, so precious, I was saying, I was saying that, I was saying that this course is not supposed to actually come at this um, um, price, given the the uh, the result. You know, it's so result oriented. You want to start immediately. You know, so it's not supposed to come at this, but I understood that, look, teachers are going through a lot at this time and it should not be overly expensive. And that is why you have it at that amount. Trust me, you have a free, you, you know, you are, you, you are, you are, I'm not just teaching you, um, I'm not just giving you fish, but I'm teaching you how to fish. So you are, you are, you are going to be learning how to create these animation videos, you know, giving, I'm going to be exposing you to, an amazing animation software that you cannot wait to start using and you are going to be learning how to make money that's the coco you're going to be learning how to make money on saturday so you can imagine how beneficial this is to you so hey, hey. <laughs> that's the concession that's the that's the edge you have yeah that's the edge I also want to find out, is it a one-day course? And then after the master class, do you stay with your mentees or you let them go and fish? Because <laughs> I know animation needs a one-on-one -on -one coach, someone that has to be there no, to put no. you through and guide you. No, uh -huh, no, so. no, 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 no. That's not the mentality. <laughs> As a tech-savvy teacher, you should believe that you should learn online. Now, let me, let me surprise you. A teacher that I did not expect, a, in fact, a school owner on that day of the, of the trade, of the empowerment program, they were just sending their animations. And I was, I was amazed. I said, oh my God, you were able to advertise your school using an animation software that I taught you. And they lent it using, look, you would my courses are so self-explanatory and you will get the results. Now, I want you to take away that mind block that tells you, oh, I need to see my teacher physically. Oh, I need the special attention. Take away that mind block. That is going to limit you from learning. Now, when you come with that kind of mindset, you watch your, the course and you're like, hmm, I need how, I need how, I need how to tell me, oh, you are not going to learn. You are not going to learn. So now, don't worry, you are going to learn. And hey, as far as you have connected with me, you have invested in my training, you, are, you have an access to me, you know. I have people that are chatting me up and saying, oh, Ify, um, can you give me an advice on how to, you know, I'm open, I'm open, I'm so open to you. You know, talk to me, I can give you guidance. I'm, I'm not about the money, I'm about making you the upgraded version as an educator. So you are open, you are free to talk to me, but we're not going to put you forever on a WhatsApp group, no, because there is this WhatsApp spirit. Sorry to say, you just get into a WhatsApp group and people just stay there. They want to stay there. They are not engaging. So we don't do that. At the end of the program, everybody is dismissed, but you have access to us. You have access. We leave the group for 24 hours and where you are able to ask the questions, you know, but you have access. We even give you access. When you were seeing my presentation, I gave you access, right? You have access to me, our phone number. I, I, I gave you so much access. So, hey, feel free. Feel free. Feel free. All right. Thank you. Um, I have a question here before I call on the next person to speak. Um, how can we help parents in rural areas that do not have access to smartphones? Wow, wow, wow. Mm, that's, that's, that's deep. That's deep. Mm, smartphones, yeah. <laughs> that's deep. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Maximizing technology. In fact, that's, that, this question came up in one of the live sessions we held. And they said, ah, parents that don't have even the smartphone, I think, just the smartphone or not laptop, smartphone, what do we do? So I can say that their phones, they, they receive text messages, right? They receive text messages. So as teachers, we should be able to maximize text, 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 okay? So as a school, you should, you should sign up for um, uh, a book 
talk SMS um, package, you know, box instruction and send in bulk to your parents, those that ca do not have smartphones. So that's like a USSD format. That's a USSD e-learning system where you are able to, 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 uh, to um, deliver instruction via a text message. Hello? You know that's possible, right? That's possible. I, um, uh, we are actually working on um, the tech service teacher. We're actually working on um, so many means of communication with parents, with schools at this time, so many offline, offline um, um, ways. But you can use your, your phone, even any kind of phone can send an SMS, right? So in an SMS, you can create content. Uh, it, you, you, you might not be able to create visual content, but it, it, text content would be better than nothing, right? So you can create instruction, create your math. It takes the willingness and passion of a school owner as a, if you are a, an educator that is passionate about reaching your children. I believe that there is no length you cannot go for them. There is no length you cannot go for that child in your class class. Right now, I still remember the children I was teaching in grade one, Beethoven. I remember those lovely children and hey, I, I loved them with so much passion that they called me mommy. You know, they called me mommy. And even when I left that school, they were still reaching out to me. So if you are so passionate about your children, you would go the extra mile to see that they are they are communicated to and hey another suggestion another suggestion is to ensure that you create hard copy hard copy uh, print out of your audiovisual materials pictures in hard copy you know you can create a hard copy package to send to parents. Parents can come and pick them up in your school centers, you know? That's amazing, that's an, that's an option, right? That is a way to bridge the digital divide. Now, the digital divide is real, it is real. Look, and hey, you would be surprised, this is not just in Nigeria, in Canada, I called a friend and she said, if he, some children do not have access to technology here in Canada, so this is not just an African problem, you know? So schools are innovating. Schools are innovating. They are creating hard copy packages where they are, their parents can come and pick up at certain designations, at certain locations, you know? So they are delivering parents that option, the hard copy option. So even as we are preaching technology, software we should still give room for people that cannot access these technologies so i hope i've answered your question yeah, thank you very much um i'll take um Olishola Bankule now i'm unmuting you ma um okay please okay. Ma, go ahead all yes. right yeah good afternoon if we thank you so so much um thank you I'm also a tech savvy teacher. Thank you for hey. your time. We appreciate. Um, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. I really, really appreciate. Um, but I want to add something. I know um, the, the general belief is, okay, um, Google Classroom, everybody, like we're doing more, we enter, enter, enter. <laughs> we keep forgetting that Google Classroom, Microsoft 365, they are simply platforms. We need content. And thank you for sharing some of the, um, the uh, apps that you know can be used. I want to, on behalf of the teachers on this platform, join my voice to Precious to say that you should please, for the sake of ACSI too, drop that amount for you to get many of our staff to join on. And I want to also let you know that, you know, it, you, are, you are making it look like so many of them don't even have any idea at all. There are so many that already are using Google Classroom and using some of these other things. And um, they just need, okay, maybe the 3D animation and 
those extra stuff and maybe some of those um, apps that can help them to develop content for the children. And I'm particularly interested in content for online assessment. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Um, please, uh, if you have questions or uh, about the courses, you can easily contact Mrs. Um, EPSN for more information. Um, I'm not sure this question is clear enough. It says, how important is having meeting with parents at this time? Uh, what about Edmundo as school hosting tool? I don't know if you got that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, can you repeat the question again? Please? Okay. How important is having meeting with parents at this time? Then okay. what about okay. Ed Edmundo? As Edmundo. Edmundo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 of course, there are so many um, technology platforms, you know, learning management systems. I cannot list all of them. You know, Edmodo is another one. I actually explored Ed, Edmodo. It's great. Schools are using Edmodo. But um, as I said, understand the tools available, but understand what works for your school in terms of what works for your parents. What, because if you, you, you have to um, put to consideration your parents too. This is not just you and your teachers. You have to put to consideration that, look, can parents use Edmodo? Can parents use, which one will be easier for them to use? Which one will be, accept, will be, will be easier? A lot of um, 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 parents do not understand anything technology. And um, Olushola said, um, I, um, um, I know um, some teachers, some, some teachers know you know, I, 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 uh, I have this, oh, you guys don't know anything. No, no, no. It's better I give you a, 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 a thorough knowledge about, about um, this field than whatever you know, you add to your knowledge. No knowledge is lost, okay? So whenever I talk, I do not say, I do not um, feel that my audience are totally um yeah. tech novices no no of course i know there are amazing tech savvy teachers amazing tech experts even watching me you know i acknowledge that so much but it's better i give a holistic approach so that i carry everybody along now parental buy-in look important it is super important if you want your children to learn it is super important you have to host them let them know how zoom works if you want to have Zoom in your school for morning assemblies, put your parents on Zoom. Let have a PTA meeting on Zoom. You know, let them know what it's like before the actual day so that there are a lot of testing, a lot of um, rehearsing, practice, you know. Just practice with your parents. Don't, don't, don't assume on them. Don't think, oh, because your teachers are good with Zoom, they should be good. No. Some teachers are to totally ignorant of these things. They never anticipated this. They didn't, they didn't sign up for this, you know. This just met everybody. So you have to understand, you have to be patient, and you have to put them through. So when you're talking about Edmodo, in fact, um, the tech savvy team, when this happened, when the, when the um, pandemic happened, um, we, we came up with a three-week program for children around the world where we created free content. We created free content. We, we looked at the three weeks of the scheme of work. We noticed that some schools just stopped abruptly, you know, because of the lockdown law. So we created some content. It was so much work, trust me. We created content in maths, in English and science, and we, we gave to parents free of charge. We called it the school intervention program. So we give to parents all around the world and the, the people were accessing that content. We had so many registrations and they accessed it. But that was for last term. I believe we're in third term now. So that is why you need to create content. You know, as, as uh, Olushola said, it is not just the learning management system. That is why I introduced you to the content creation software first, if you notice because that's very important. That's very key. Create content because that is the life of your learning management system. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, 
I'll take another question. What advice do you have for school heads who have teachers that have no laptops for PowerPoint presentation? Okay. Um, hmm. PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so as I said when I was t um, training that we discovered some um, mobile software applications, okay, that a teacher can leverage on to actually use her smartphone. So I'm holding a smartphone right here. And with this smartphone, I have created PowerPoint presentations. I have created Canva presentations. And I have converted those presentations to videos, exciting videos with my smartphone. So there's so much you can do with it. Now, I'll give you some. I didn't mention that during my session. Now, for smartphone screen casting applications, you can go, you can use Du Recorder. Du Recorder, like D U Recorder. That's amazing. You can use it to create videos, you can use it to edit videos. You can, it's just amazing. It's amazing. You know, so you can use that to, with your, your, your phone to create smartphones to um, record your slides. And you know that PowerPoint has a mobile application. You can get that in Play Store. So you can access PowerPoint Mobile on, on, in Play Store. You can access Canva Mobile. Canva also have, has a mobile application. So you can access all of them on Play Store or App Store, depending on the software or the device you are using. Okay, so I believe with this, we can maximize the use of our smartphones. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I want to know if Microsoft 365 comes at a cost, like uh, okay. Um, Ma our Google okay. Classroom. Microsoft, okay, Microsoft 365 um, um, has a free package. In fact, every software, <laughs> every software that you see is free. They have a premium. They have a pro. <laughs> so there is because hey the, the 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 creators of those software applications they need to get money but hey Microsoft and and Google they are doing uh, free offers for sign up okay indicate you are a school put your edu domain and access their free package but then you can now progress to the to the paid one when you are convinced that hey this is nice this is great i think i want to get to the next level and there are different payment plans available so for more information on microsoft 365 yeah you, or google classroom you can you can get in touch with me i, I guess they are free start, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you um do you have any other questions i think i've exhausted all the questions i have if someone wants to speak here, um, um, yeah, Muftar Hamza, oh, thank you, go ahead. Yeah, thank yes. you for unmuting me. Good afternoon, Ifi. Yes, and Hello. I will say well done. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful presentation. I've been to your Instagram page; it's quite wonderful. Wow, Over four hundred pages, four hundred postings are there. My contribution is that uh, to ACSI, how can this continue after COVID? Let's break it into sections. There are around 14 people that participated on this particular meeting that has dropped to 70 something. Somebody from Liberia. So this is quite wonderful. ACSI, how do we ensure that you go back to the schools and make sure that they are doing something Relating to this virtual learning teaching, not because of coffee. Coffee has brought this to us, it has come to stay with us. In my school, we started on 20th of March when the school closed, and we are still on it. So that is wonderful. So, if you thank you very much for your yeah. inputs, for your contributions, for impacting more knowledge into us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's more of the reason why we're doing this so that post COVID 19, people are. Already conversant with these things. I'm sure most schools that have been using technology uh, with teaching in their various schools they have a lot of problems um, using um, technology at this time. The schools that have not been using it that actually have the problem at this time. Uh, so thank you for your input and um, 
ACSI Nigeria, we continue to try as much as possible to follow up with schools to ensure that they uh, go technology as well. Thank you very much, sir. Um, um, I have Rosemary. Hello? Rosemary? Okay. I can hear. She's fine. So um, that's all the questions I have.